pleasant evening to you wherever you're watching us from. Those of you watching us across the 46 other African countries via satellites, we are extremely grateful. Those of you watching us in some parts of Europe and South America, thank you so much. This is talk time uh, with Chrissy Pratt, but unfortunately, or I would say fortunately for me, I get to fill in his shoes because of you know, some very, very important reasons. This evening, we are going to be talking about the National Commission for Civic Education. Well, uh, this organization or this independent body that has been in existence for quite a number of years, they've been doing so much, and particularly for this year, 2024, which is an election year, there's so much that uh, they are going to be doing. If you are aware, if you may be aware, they've already uh, released a press statement, they've done a press conference as well for that matter, outlining the activities for 2024, especially uh, with an election in sight on 7th December 2024. Personally, I have a lot of questions to ask as far as the activities of the uh, NCCE is concerned. I understand their theme for this year is together we can build, so get involved. Am I right? We can build Ghana. Right. Together we can build Ghana, so get involved. That is uh, quite an emphatic theme, if you ask me. And this evening, I've been joined by Miss Kathleen Adi. She is the chairperson of the National Commission for Civic Education. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Thank it's, you very much for having me. Right. Uh, it's, it's our pleasure. And uh, I, I want to believe this is your first time with us. No, it's not. Oh, OK. You've this been is here. about maybe my third time. Your third time here yes. on Pan African Television. Yes. Right. Right. Without further ado, let's, let's get into the conversation. Sure. The NCC has been in force for a long time, I think for the past 30 years. As old as the Republic. As old as since mm -hmm. 1993. Yes. yes. So, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot you have been doing. But personally, mm -hmm. I have a lot of questions, especially mm -hmm. with your activities mm -hmm. and how particularly you are able to finance it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over here in Accra, there may probably not be so much to do, mm -hmm. but into hard, like when you go to hard to reach communities, mm -hmm. like you go to some parts of northern Ghana, some mm -hmm. parts of mm -hmm. western Ghana for that matter, there are communities that you, you, you would admit that mm -hmm. are so hard to reach. How are you able to do it? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity to um, speak about the institution and the work that we do. Um, for starters, I'll say that um, this is an institution that was born with the Republic mm -hmm. is one of four independent governance institutions in this country. The others are the Electoral Commission, the Media Commission, and the Human Rights Commission. These four institutions are created specially and called independent governance institution for a reason, because they are insulated from political um, direct interference and um, for instance, I don't report to the government, I report to the parliament. Mm -hmm. The special budget committee of parliament, which is headed by both parties, is, is, chaired by, is jointly chaired by, by uh, the majority and the minority leader. And that is the constitutional arrangement that we have. And a lot of people don't understand it. But so my programs and my budgets, that's where I take it for discussions and all of that. Mm -hmm. So just to let you understand the type of institution the NCC is. Also, in terms of um, reach and spread, the NCC is a highly decentralized institution with offices in every district. So for work to be done in the furthest reaches of the Western region, I don't need to go there. Nobody from head office needs to go there. We have an office in every district, and they do the best they can within the, the resources they have to go as far as they can. And so um, people don't understand that it's a decentralized institution or how big or how broad it is. I mean, we have a staff strength of over 1,700 across the country. It's not a small organization. And so if you take the farthest reaches, whichever district that uh, that place is in, they have a responsibility to do civic education to that point. Sometimes they're not able to reach really far away from, from where they are stationed because they may not have a car or they may not have a bike. But that is not to say that they are not they don't have they don't do anything or they are not out there in the districts. I don't know if they brought um, the pictures to show you. If you had if you do a background check and you go on our on our uh, pages, our social media pages, 
you will see work being done across the country mm. that we put on the social media pages for people to understand that uh, this work is going on. The work of NCC is not glamorous. It's not the kind of work that I, I, I get to do the easiest part. I come on this platform, have this nice conversation in this nice office, you know. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the staff of NCC are out there in the country working, working very hard under very trying, you know, very challenging circumstances. Mm -hmm. They put in their best. Mm -hmm. And every time we talk about not having resources to work, I feel like it's important to put this nuance in because I don't want the impression ever to be given that the staff are out there not working. Not working. Even with very little resources, we are still managed to we still manage to do a lot. Mm. They are out there in the lorry parks, in the markets, with the, uh, those who have um, the communication, the loudspeaker equipment, those who have cars, is mounted on cars. They are out there in churches and mosques, you know, talking to people. They engage um, trade associations across the country, area clubs. They work with um, traditional authorities, local authorities. They collaborate with other organizations for a lot of work to be done in the districts. Mm. But it's not the kind of work that you find being done in a nice office, a nice studio. Mm. People don't pay attention to it. Mm. So yes, they don't have all the resources they need. But they do a lot of work for what they have. Mm. We currently manage over 5,000 civic education clubs across the country in, in, in high schools and in the universities. Our ideal situation would be to have a civic education club in every school because civics, there's no actual civics in the curriculum anymore, but we don't have that. So in the meantime, we work through the clubs where we are able to, they do debates, um, we, we go and engage with them, they do competitions, they play with the, our constitution game board. So a lot of work gets mm. done, mm. even though not as much as we would like, mm. but given what we get, a lot gets done. Mm. Well, o o ostensibly, given what you get, or what and you get. And I would get... like to talk about, you know, a lot more beyond just that, mm. because, um, like you said, we, we did a press conference on, on Monday, mm. outlining the things that, the points of concern mm -hmm. that we have um, for this election, mm. and talking about some of the programs that we are hoping to undertake in right. this election period. Right. I don't want this to be about, you know, this and that and that, right. because the Commission has been under resourced from the one, mm. government in, government out. Is there is there is there, is there improvement? Would yes, you say there that? is improvement. Mm. It's not massive improvement, but there definitely is improvement. Mm. And I always tell people that don't hear it from me. Do the work. Go and <laughs> and get the budget figures. We yeah. have a pub, we are a public institution. Yeah. Everything about our institution is for public consumption. So go get the figures and and you know see for yourself. It's not the best. But it's a little better, mm. you know. We were our fleet is almost completely down. In the last couple of years, I mean, we managed to get a couple some car, cars, not not to meet our need hundred percent, but we we've got a few things. Mm. And so, always when I talk, I like to be factual about it. So yes, it's true. It's a poorly resourced institution. It has been poorly resourced from day one, and that is why our need is so deep. Because the 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 the, um, the defunding of the commission has happened systematically over the years, you know, and so you know we have this problem. But I am not somebody to dwell on. So when you are given a job, the idea is for you to go and do it, not to also go and complain. You remember the little so that I'm you not a, I'm not yeah. a complainer. Yeah, that's not my style. Right. I rather like to do the best I can and mm. showcase what I'm able to do mm. with what I have. Mm. Now, let's, let's look at some of the concerns you've raised, especially going into this uh, particular yes, election. Yes. I know you, you've spoken about um, the monetization mm -hmm. of our politics, mm -hmm. where yes. uh, we are, you are going to be sensitizing the Ghanaian people yes. against this yes. as well, as well as a host of other issues. Now, it appears that this is, this is primarily a canker that we have come to accept, mm -hmm. we have come to... Uh, to live with mm -hmm. in our body polity. Mm -hmm. So how how does the NCCE, mm -hmm. uh, how is the NCCE going to change this narrative mm -hmm. and going to tell, to convince the Ghanaian people that look, in as much as uh, you, you need this money, mm -hmm. don't take it. Mm -hmm. and, or maybe take it and then still vote for who you want to vote for. Mm -hmm. what, what is the message primarily? Okay. Well, 
I mean, people say take the money and vote for who you vote for, but it's, it's still wrong. You should never reduce our democracy to a transaction, a transaction around your votes, which you have not just because you know it fell on your lap, but because people fought to have a, for have a republic. We have fought republic for a reason because the first few republics were overthrown by coups, right? And people made huge sacrifices to get uh, uh, the machine going for us to pull ourselves from military rule back into a republic and build a democracy that has lasted 30 years in spite of all its problems, right? And so I don't think that we should, we should cheapen that. The history is heavy. The sacrifices are huge. Lives were lost, blood is shed, we build a republic, and then 30 years down the line, things have so degenerated that at this point, it's, you know, you can just say that, oh, well, yes, I am sharing money and the people receiving the money can say, yes, I'm taking money, I'm demanding money. I think it's wrong. It's not about us convincing anybody. It's about us letting Ghanaians understand the value of the votes and the weight of the democracy that we, have, we, are, we are inheriting from those who fought for it for us. We shouldn't take it for granted. And we shouldn't let the needs of today, right, destroy our future and our potential as a country. Because money, the kind of money that we see in politics in the last couple of years is, 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 is getting to a point where it's, it's, really, it's really worrying. In the past, early in the Republic, you hear rumors, oh, maybe these people were sharing money or they were sharing gifts. But at that time, it was even done, it was hidden, you know. But over time, it's like we are trying very hard to normalize it, to become very brazen. Yeah. And our position is that it's dangerous. It's a threat to our democracy. It's a threat to our existence as a country. And, you know, it's a threat to our way of life because the money is not free money. And if we reduce um, election of public officials to who can pay more, then we defeat the fundamental bedrock of the democracy that says that people offer themselves for elections and they compete based on their ideas and their track record and their proven capabilities, you know, and the way they're able to share the vision for everybody to buy into. Based on those things, we elect the best person for us. Mm. But if we now reduce it to who has the most money, and we have a problem because somebody will always have more money yeah because there's a lot of money in the world not all of it is coming from a good place and all of, not all of it comes to good intention and wherever the money comes from it will go back it doesn't also equate to competence of course it doesn't that is the reason why it is a threat to the democracy because at the end of the day one you exclude people who could actually make a difference for the entire society, mm. you exclude them because they didn't come and give you money. Because right now, the money thing is not just a supply side problem. It's not just politicians coming and saying, take money, take money. It's a demand problem as well, where we see people openly saying, well, these people, if they don't pay me, I will not vote. It's dangerous, and we we'll wake up one day and we would have sold our country to somebody we don't even know. Mm. Uh, it's a strange entity. And when that entity is in charge, because they will win the election fair and square because they paid and people also voted for them. We don't know what the outcome of all of that will be. Mm. So we need to be very careful. So it's not about NCC convincing people or this and what. We need to have the awareness and take a decision for ourselves as a country that how do we want this republic to evolve? How do we want this country to grow? What direction do we want us to take, all of us together? Because it's not about one person or one party or the other, right? And that, that is really what this is about. And so we are raising this issue, and this is not the first time. Last year, when we did our Constitution Day broadcast, we raised the same issue. The monetization is getting excessive. The fact that at this point people think that that is what voting is about is very, very dangerous. Mm. It's very dangerous. Mm. And if you, if you make these demands of people who are trying to get into public office, once they're in the public office, how do you now go and collect the public goods that they were originally designed to deliver to you? How do, how, how, how do we you understand? So we, we collect money, 
we elect people, they don't deliver, and we complain very bitterly. Mm. You understand? Mm. It's a cycle. Great. And if we don't, if we don't, you know, um, think about it and come to a decision as to what we really want for our future and our republic, one day we'll fall into on very, on very dangerous grounds. Mm. Mm. Now, apathy, apathy as well is a, is a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. There are lots of Ghanaians who, uh, who have lost confidence mm -hmm. in, the, in the whole mm -hmm. democratic process, mm -hmm. I mean, process and have decided that they won't vote. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is something your outfit is mm -hmm. also trying to work on. Mm -hmm. Exactly how is that also going to be done? Well, the thing about, um, I mean, again, people need to understand what the vote is and what a democracy means. Because it was never promised to be a simple thing or an easy thing. Mm -hmm. A democracy is not easy. Running a democracy is not easy. Because it's a form of uh, government that is based on consensus. And coming to consensus, even within your family, is not easy. So are you going to say that because you have a disagreement in your family, you, you will collapse the family? Mm. No, you can't collapse the family. We have to understand it in those terms. That is not about, I'm disappointed, so I won't vote. If, if you... If you um, if you are not happy with the way things are in the in the democracy, there is no, there are no special people who are supposed to be leaders, or very special people who are supposed to run for office, or very special people who are supposed to be in politics. No, the democracy allows everybody, every citizen, affords you the opportunity. You understand? Um, I think that we must we must think about it in a different way. It's not about. I won't vote for you as if it's a punishment, right? It's about saying that what do we as a society need and how do we work together for it? It's not about politicians. We all have roles to play in the democratic dispensation. We all have to do our part. Citizens have the biggest role. We have to elect officials. We have to hold them to account. We have to make sure that they hold up to their end of, 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 of the bargain. You understand? They have to hold up to the end of the bag. And nobody can do that except us, we who elected them. So really, truly, you must ask ourselves, what have we done in terms of holding public officials accountable? You know, if we neglected our role, then we also need to do something more. But to say that um, I won't vote, somebody's going to vote <laughs> at the end of the day. And the person is going to decide for that you. That person is going to decide for you. You know, I don't think that we are at a point in this country where we'll see people, mass people sitting at home. Personally, I don't think so. You know, people will go out there and vote. And I encourage everybody to do the same. You know, I, sometimes people say there's too much politics. I think there's too little of it. People should be more interested in how the political system is running. People should be interested in how political parties are running. If you support a political party, don't let it be about a personality or because it's my family. Get in there. Get to understand what they are doing. Let them feel your presence. Do you understand? A political party is not a private club. These are public institutions governed by rules and regulations. How many of us know how political parties are supposed to run? What our role, even as citizens, is in, in, in making sure that they do the right thing? So let's, let's take up the task as citizens properly. You know, that is not to say that we absolve the political class in, in, of, all, of all wrongdoing, right? But we also have a role to play. Mm -hmm. They have a role to play and we have a role to play. If we wake up one day, let's, let's do an experiment, one consistency, and we say this time we're not taking anybody's money. How do you think politicians will feel? They'll be terrified. <laughs> They'll be terrified, mm -hmm. you know? Because in some kind of ways, finding the money and sharing it is easier than letting people see your true self, your vision, <laughs> your capabilities. Let's, let's try it once. Let's try with one constituency. Say, this time around, we are looking at you and we are listening to what you are saying. Nobody should bring five cities, two cities, thousands. Nobody should bring anything here. Mm. We will vote according to what we see. See how they will be up and doing. They will be quickly up and doing because politicians are rational. Do you, do you involve... Um, mm -hmm the political parties in your, in your discourse? Yes, we do. If also, if you follow our work properly, you will see that we engage the political parties and hopefully we hope to continue to engage them even at the year 
and faults. Um, I, like I said, I don't, a lot of people like to say, oh, the politicians and the, if we don't have political parties, we are not running a democracy. What we've chosen to run is a multi-party democracy, which implies that there will be parties. The parties are legal, they are legitimate, they need to work properly, they need to present ideas, they need to select leaders that we will together, come together and select from amongst them. Mm. You understand? So I, I, don't, I don't think that um, necessarily the politics is a bad thing. I think that we should, we should get more involved. Have there, we have cannot there... cede, leave the country to just politicians to, yeah. make, to decide any way they want, to do everything they want. We need to do better. Mm. In your engagements mm -hmm. with them, would you say that they've been cooperative? Uh, there's no problem with any political party in this country. No problem whatsoever. And I have not had any problem with any political party in this country. Co cooperative in the sense that uh, are they able to, um, uh, I mean, some of the things that you tell them not to do, mm. do they heed to these admonitions? Well, the thing is that it's a process. Mm. It's a process. I can't say that uh, uh, we've had 100% because also, you, you can't, it, it cannot be that just because I said it means that, or we said it means that people should take it. But we have to learn to keep working at things in this country. Whatever situation we face today is not, uh, okay, let's give up, let's throw our hands in the air. We need to keep working at things. If you want to change behavior, right, there are things you need to do. Just because you do it once, it doesn't work, doesn't mean you should not keep doing it. You know, you, you do you work consistently and you push consistently and then you, you are able to have a breakthrough, you know. So for me, it's not about whether uh, I, we said somebody and somebody didn't listen, but well, that's, for me, it's, like, it's not the best way of looking at things. The institutions were not set up for one-off engagements. They are set up to continuously engage and grow. So I can't answer that question for you because for me, it's not about whether somebody's right, somebody's wrong. It's not, it's not, I don't work like that. It's more about there's a continuous engagement and we continue to talk and we continue to, because there's nobody that is trying to intentionally set the country back. If you talk to political parties and politicians, it's never true that they just, they are just there trying to set the whole country back intentionally. I don't see it that way. I just see that there are problems that need to be solved and we must work to solve the problems. That's it. We must work to solve problems. If it's not solved today, it's not the end of the world. We can solve it tomorrow. The, the, the democracy we are practicing has a lot of inbuilt uh, 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 checks and balances, a lot of inbuilt mechanisms to check and balance ourselves. We should use it. Mm -hmm. you know? And we should, you know, we should understand that it's not going to be rosy. It's not going to be rosy. We are in a time of economic crisis or it's a global problem. Look at the West African sub-region. Look at how countries are falling left and right. Yeah. So, so we are in a time of turmoil, you know. And so, of course, there's a lot of anxiety, people, a lot of discontent. But the thing is, do we give up on our country? Is that what we do? No. We keep, we keep pushing. We keep striving. We keep trying to do better. We keep engaging. That's what it is. We don't decide that, well, I mean, things are bad, so... We vote. We just sit down. Would you say that the 2024, the upcoming 2024 mm -hmm. general elections poses uh, arguably the biggest challenge to the NCC? Well, it depends on the kind of challenge you're talking about. You know, in this Ghana we're living in, every election year is supposed to be the last day. Every time, every time we're, ha we're going to have elections, we say, oh, this election, you know, there's so much tension, it will fall apart, it will work, it's so bad. Every time, am I lying? Mm. We hear that. Uh, yes, every election cycle you hear that. That oh, this is the this is the one we are not coming back from. This is the one that will end everything. You know, the first day after 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 the election, there's so much tension. People start running away from the seats. You know, <laughs> people start parking and trying to leave and all of that. But we always pull through. Mm. So far, right? Mm. And I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say this time around we will not pull through. But I will say that there's one thing that is different this time around, that we should be, that, that gives us cause to be extra vigilant, right? 
and that thing is the external threat that we face in the sub-region, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that um, there's so much instability, the fact that countries are falling to violent extremists, extremists, countries are falling to coup cool makers, countries are falling left and right, right? And we are sitting in the middle of all of it, and we are about to have an election. And those things that are happening in those countries are fueled by external forces who take advantage of problems, internal problems. So one of the ways we are making ourselves very vulnerable is by heightening our internal problems. And if we don't work to fix them, other people will come and take advantage of them. Currently, we are running a project NCC in the, in the five northern regions and as an eight out of the 16 regions you know, on preventing and containing violent extremism, right? And the whole idea is to ensure that the communities in those areas understand the kind of threat that is out there and are able to identify it, respond to it, know what to do when infiltrators come into their communities. Because the way some of these extremists work, they, they, they infiltrate your community. They know that by all means they will find people who lack something lack of clean water, lack of this, lack of that. They come, they start with an organization, they, they provide this, they provide that. Next thing you know, they form clubs, they are sharing bad ideologies. They are, by the time, the day the, the guns arrive in your community, they've poisoned you from within because they've captured your people even before they arrive. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to ensure that we are able to, um, we are able to help our people understand some of these things so that they, 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 you know. So for me, the external threat is the biggest problem of this election. Apart from the external threat, the internal problems we have are not insurmountable. They are problems that we just need to work to resolve. Whatever the difficulties are, the misunderstanding. Every election year we have some kind of problems. Mm. Every, somebody should point to me an election year where everything was 100% and smooth from the one and everybody agreed. It's never, never the case. Mm. So if we are at a point where there's disagreement and people, you know, I don't think it's, it's that, it's that a, a, a situation that is so unheard of in our political culture. Mm. This is what we do. Mm. Eventually we will fix it. So let's focus on how do we resolve problems? What are the mechanisms we are putting in place to ensure that um, we take decisions that everybody, even if they don't agree 100% to, they know that well giving all the different opinions this is a fair middle ground for everybody mm. how do we ensure that there's collaboration there's cooperation institutions are working institutions are funded to do their work these are the things that, for me that are important mm. because in terms of getting the system going and working together to get to the end point execute the election and then and finish it i think we do not too bad a job it's not perfect mm and we compare ourselves to it. We don't do too bad a job. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not even compare ourselves to just our sub-region. Look at the whole world. Look at the big democracies. Look at the things that are going on there. So the fact that we're having difficulties with our democracy shouldn't be something that should be seen as the end of the world. Look at the established democracies. Look at the problems that they're having. Some of them are worse, worse off than we are. Look at the election disputes. Some are worse. Mm -hmm. Some are things that will never happen here. There are many established countries that our electoral system is more transparent than this, you know. So my thing always is that let's, 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 let's just try and get better. But to throw your hands in the air and say, oh, this is the end of it all. Oh, this time we will not, you know. But again, it's normal. At the, at the beginning of the cycle, we always see this. Mm. We always come to resolutions. We always work together. So for me, the external threat is the biggest threat we face. Again, I'm, I'm going to be asking you questions relating to um, this year particularly mm -hmm. and the election. Mm -hmm. Would you, in your estimation, say that when it comes to um, religious and ethnic tolerance, mm -hmm. I mean, over the years, this, this is um, an area where we've done so well, I mean, from mm -hmm. my own perspective, sure. I don't know about yours, but then, would you, would you say that this year's mm -hmm is different looking yes. at the two top candidates mm -hmm. and their religious inclinations mm -hmm. absolutely to be honest i i didn't even think that i thought we was 
we were so we are we I thought we were way past it. Yeah. I didn't think that the religion will be an issue. The fact that there's a Muslim candidate was going to be an issue, or was going to be something else that people will capitalize on and try and divide people along religious lines. That actually took me a little by surprise, you know. But that just shows that the work of building society, democracy, is continuous. It's continuous. It means that we've taken for granted the kind of uh, uh, non, the kind of peace and stability we have where religion is concerned. We've taken it for granted. That means that actually people are there who are ready to whip up sentiments. People are there who are ready to incite others. There are people there who are ready to do and say all kinds of things to, to make the religion another issue of contention around the politics. And it's very wrong. Mm. And if you if you if you paid attention to our press conference, you see that we had all representatives from all the um, faith-based organizations. We had the general secretary of the Christian Council. We had the chief imam spokesperson. We had the a leader from the Pentecost Church. We had the leadership of the Ahmadiyya. We had um, leadership of the Catholic bishops as well, because they all recognize that this particular thing. Is, is is not it's not something we should allow to even take root and grow grow you know germinate and then bear fruit we have to nip it in the bud and they were all there at our, uh, at, at our press conference because we are all working together in partnership with the peace council as well to ensure that people don't allow themselves to be swayed by uh, this new trend of people trying to get old Muslims should vote this way, Christians should, should vote this way. I think it's bad. But we, we, it's, a, it's something that we, are, we, are, we want to nip in the bud very, very quickly. We will be doing a lot of programming around those things. Mm. Um, we'll be doing interfaith dialogues. Um, we'll be doing town hall meetings in the districts. And a whole lot of other engagements, sports, games, all of those things. So just to help people understand that nothing has changed. We just have a, a candidate of a different um, religion. But the way we live as Ghanaians, the way we've lived in peace, the way we are tolerant of each other, the way in most communities you find a mosque and a church and the this and that, and they are all, you never find like, tension or problems. When it's all of us are holidays, we go and eat in each other's homes. You know, Nobody looks forward to the sandla more than I do. Because it is the opportunity for me to go and eat rice and demand meat from people, you know. Same the other direction, you know what I mean? So we don't want that, but that thing that we've established, which is a huge plus because many countries don't have it that way. We don't want to lose it. And so we are working, and our work is grassroots work, so we are working right from the grassroots mm -hmm. to ensure that mm -hmm. that does not become a big issue the way some will want it to be, mm -hmm. to further political ambition. Yeah. When, when, when is this uh, commencing? Oh, we, we, we started our year, we just we came back to work. We started with the, um, the, the press conference that we did just mm -hmm. two, three days ago. But has a, has a timetable been drawn already? Oh, it's early days. Okay. But definitely we've hit the ground running. Mm. We're going to start rolling out our programs. Our programs are not just for religion. We do a lot of programs for targeting young people, violence in elections, another thing that we are talking about this year. That is an don't sit down as a young person or as any person unless a politician come and tell you to pick up a, a, a gun or pick up a knife or whatever and go and cause mayhem somewhere. What does that tell you? Somebody comes to tell you that, what, what do you think the person is telling you? That your life doesn't matter, right? That you are dispensable, that your life and your limbs and your blood is nothing, has no value. But every citizen of Ghana it's of value to the republic. It's not, there's no citizen of Ghana who, who is this, just dispensable like that. So I'm encouraging young people not to allow themselves to be led astray by all kinds of elements who come and tell them that go and fight this and that. And also to let them understand that actually there are laws around these things, you know. And so if you do it, maybe somebody got away with it, so you think you can get away with it. Maybe you know, you're, you're so lucky. You, 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 it's not lucky. Maybe mm. you may not be the one. You may you may be the one that they're know, going to make an example of. You, you just don't know. Yeah. So don't don't throw away your life mm. to get somebody elected into office. Mm. It's not worth it. Mm. Not your life, not your limb, 
not one drop of your blood. This year, let's all commit to that, that we will not lose a life, we will not lose a limb, we will not drop one, we will not waste one drop of blood for anything, mm. for anything. It's not worth it. Mm. I know, I know, I know the uh, NCCE uh, tries to be as much as ubiquitous as possible. You are almost everywhere in 268 districts. Um, but I'm sure that in, in, in light of your logistical constraints, mm -hmm. which we've all admitted to, mm -hmm. there are certain communities that you say are hot spots, mm -hmm. uh, whether far mm -hmm. or near. Mm -hmm. do, do you, is there a plan to reach these communities yeah. first? Yeah. There are always hot spots. Every election, we have, we have a, a map of hot spots. Okay. There's a map of hot spots. Um, in, in in you know generally election 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 um, period hotspots and it's a stable map it doesn't change much it changes a bit but it doesn't change much and we always have special programming for hotspots mm. that that's a given it's not this year we've always done that we paid special attention to it. and it's usually places that have existing conflict that the politics comes to mix with and it becomes more toxic so there's chieftaincy dispute there's land dispute there's some deep political problem, you know, and there's, you know, all kinds of factionalism and those. There are places where those things, there's a problem that has not been resolved. So when the politics, the political season starts and it gets mixed up with that problem, then that problem is heightened. So there are hot spots, and every election year, we pay special attention to to the hot spots. So that is not even just a this year issue. It's something that has been done always over the years. Would you, would you say that the NCC has been, um, I know uh, there may not be a 100% success mm -hmm. rate, mm -hmm. but over the years, every mm -hmm. four years we, we hold elections, mm -hmm. would you say that you, you see improvements in these areas? So let me say that, you know that the NCC is not just an election education machine. This is an, a, 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 an institution that was set up to ensure, first and foremost, that our constitution remains our constitution in the sense that nobody comes to overthrow it, to get people to understand the democracy we are practicing and to be committed to defending the constitution at all times. That's, that's the big first thing that we do. Then we have our thematic areas, of which voter education is just one. We have our day-to-day -day work outside of the uh, 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 election season. We do a lot of work. We have work um, on uh, citizenship, understanding rights and responsibilities, responsibilities, right? We have work educating people about, um, uh, you know, vulnerable groups, women, people with disability. We do work around, we have an a, a, a environmental governance mandate where we are supposed to help people, you know, work, raise awareness around climate change, environmental issues. That, that area is something we haven't actually exploited fully, but it's, 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 it's there, it's part of the mandate. We have things around global citizenship, um, peace and security. All these things fall under our mandate. So I just want to let you understand that it's not just the election, the, the, the election period that we are supposed to, or we have work to do. Mm -hmm. We do all of this work on a continuous basis. Now, um, to your question, there are so many things that happen that are not necessarily in the view of media. And so people don't see it and so people assume that nothing is going on. But the peace and security we've, we've enjoyed over the past 30 years, it's not, it's, it did not just happen. The Fourth Republic built a lot of mechanisms to ensure that, you know, coups don't su succeed, you know, that we, we, we continue to be a republic no matter how difficult things get, we continue to grow. There are mechanisms in the constitution for changing, uh, for, for, for making amendments in the constitution. All of this has been thought of already, right? So in terms of, of the work that we are supposed to be doing, it's not just uh, elections. Now, in the election cycle, we have what we call the IPDCs. This is the party dialogue committees. They are district-based committees. They are, they are the sort of organized, you know, they're a small organization you won't hear about, but it's an NCC organization. But the, the, it's a committee. It's made up of, of course, NCC, 
representatives of the political parties at the district level, not the big short politicians, just district level. Then we have um, representatives from traditional leaders in that community, in that district. We have representatives from local government. We, ca we have representatives from the uh, security architecture, right? And when the election cycle starts, these committees, they are there. Sometimes they are dormant. But when the election cycle starts, they are activated. And what they do is solve problems at the district level. It may never come to your attention. Because the problem they are solving at the district level may be what you think oh, is a small problem. But that, those are the problems that, if left unaddressed, grow to become big problems. And my typical example is always somebody putting their poster over somebody's poster. Yeah. It sounds like nothing. I mean, if you sit here in Accra and you hear that people are upset about that, oh, it's a poster. Just paste another one. But you and I know that it's not that simple. Yeah. Right? So if you have that kind of problem in the district, what the IPDC will do is quickly call the parties involved, do arbitration, and conflict resolution, and settle the issue right there. It doesn't get in the news. It doesn't get into any big discussions. These things have been consistently every election cycle. And then so the rest of us get to just have an easy election. We sit around, we get to have our time on air, we talk, we, we talk about our opinions, what we feel, we talk and talk freely. Election day comes, of course, it's never 100%, but we go, for the most part, we all go, we vote, we do this and that. But a lot of work goes into making that process smooth. A lot of work goes into making that process smooth. And one of the tools that we use for that is the IPDC, which every election cycle become activated. They're already existing. They already know themselves. They just acti you know, activate themselves and start solving problems at the district level. Mm -hmm. Also has a representative of the Peace Council and all the people who are interested in, who work around getting elections to conclude and let's all get on with our lives. Mm -hmm. so have representation in the IPDC. I think, I think my next question has partly been answered. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out from you uh, the modern, modern ways mm -hmm. of um, information dissemination and mm -hmm. education because mm -hmm. I mean for a long time I see NCC vans you mm -hmm. know roam around with the uh, with the uh, with the horns. horns making announcements I see I, I watch advertisements on TV mm -hmm. I wanted to find out if there are other modern ways of course social media mm -hmm. social media yes so, social media how mm -hmm. active and I'm going to be following I, the I, NCC I, I, as soon I think as soon should, as this I interview think you is should done. Have started following us before this interview <laughs> then I don't have to say anything you yeah. see for yourself yeah. Yeah. our social media pages are very active vibrant very vibrant what mm -hmm. I, I told you that you know one of the things I always talk about is that if you think that the institution is, is maybe Accra based, you go on our pages. Consistently, we post the activities that we are undertaking across the country mm. in places that you, it will not even cross your mind. You will see NCC staff carrying speakers, walking, you know, crossing water bodies, going as far as they can go, mm. on the motorbike, in the bushes, walking. So, as for the social media, I mean, of course, it could, we could, we are constantly improving it. Yeah. But if you want to um, see that the work is getting done, then that's where you should go. We we are actually going to um, do a lot more mm. on and online because I mean we know the po population dynamics have changed. About yeah. seventy percent of the of the population is now under the age of thirty five, yeah. and this cohort are. Uh, take their news, uh, all their information from social media. Social media is an integral part of life. It's not just like me that I, all my notifications are off. When I'm ready, I'll look at my WhatsApp. If you send me WhatsApp and you think I'm holding my phone 24-7, you uh, they have times yeah. that I do WhatsApp. Yeah. But for most people... The Gen Zs. It's not even just Gen Zs. For most people, they, they, they are constantly buzzing. Buzzing their phone. The you millennials, know, yes, the Gen Zs. Yeah. Everything you hear, buzz, you see a light, it is, and it's all calling you. So yeah. they are constantly on the phone. Mm -hmm. And for us, one of the things that we go by is that we will go where the Ghanaians are. We will find Ghanaians wherever they are. And online is where a lot of, a significant number of Ghanaians are these days. Mm -hmm. So we are working very hard to even, you know, put more energy into our social media uh, campaigns to make sure that we are able to reach people that way as well. Mm. There are a lot of people who will not see an NCC event. There are lots of people who don't watch TV, yeah. any TV at all. There are a lot of people who are just, you know, 
online. They, they are constantly scrolling Twitter. They are on YouTube. And that is the population that we must cater to more, more vigorously in the, in, the, in the coming months. And that's what we intend to do. Oh, interesting. Interesting. And um, I, I can say for a fact that this is one of uh, the media, mm -hmm. uh, our station, Pan African Television, especially in northern Ghana, our presence there is massive. Okay. I'm sure a lot of them are doing their watching. So, whatever information we are disseminating uh, this evening has mm -hmm. reached them. Uh, loud and clear. If, you, if you're just joining us, we're having conversations in relation to the National Commission for Civic Education, the NCC, uh, for that matter, and their chairperson, uh, Miss Kathleen Adi. Uh, she's having that conversation with me relating to the activities, especially heading into the 2024 um, election. We've, we've covered areas in relation to religious and ethnic tolerance. We've spoken about uh, voter apathy. They held a press conference uh, recently and I mean there is these issues and how uh, they are going to address them in, in the coming months. The year just started so there's a lot that they'll be doing. I'm sure uh, they'll, they'll, they'll hit the, the ground running and whatever they have for Ghanaians. Myself, I wish I wish them well. I, I love the NCC. Oh, good to hear that. Oh. And, and let me just say that you know, we appreciate these opportunities. Yeah. Um, our, our logistics doesn't make it possible for us to take advantage of big media platforms like yours in terms of coming to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And so when we get the opportunity to come here like this, we really, really appreciate it mm -hmm. because we don't get it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So where we get it, we appreciate it. Um, when you asked me this was my first time here, I just laughed because mm -hmm. I've been here. You've been here. You know, this, um, this platform has offered us time, mm -hmm. you know, on a number of occasions mm -hmm. to come and, you know, do, do the work that we do. And so we are actually very grateful to mm -hmm. you. For that, we hope that it will continue. Well, of course, so it will. Of course, it will. Of course, it will. It will. But this is laughing. We hope yeah, that it will. It will continue in the coming months. Yeah. You know, we could even establish something regular and consistent. Of course, we would. And, I, uh, I actually was the morning show as well too. Okay. So we, right. we can have that conversation. Okay. Perhaps right. put put you on the morning show consistently, right. consistently. every week once. That 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 yes, could be possible. Like that. Yes. I'll see how. I'll see. I'll see about that. Okay. I'll see about that. Okay. But you mentioned about your. Um, your staff yes. doing so much mm -hmm. in, in, in how to reach communities, carrying speakers on their heads, mm -hmm. having to cross rivers. I, I wanted to find out from you. I know there are logistic challenges, mm -hmm. but then the safety of these people as well. Yes, that's very paramount for us. I mean, for instance, in, in, in the areas where sometimes we have in the areas where sometimes we have a conflict situation and all of that, we pull them from the field, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the, the nature of the work is such that um, they can be exposed to danger and the work does not necessarily give them the tools to keep themselves safe. Mm -hmm. So where there's a safety issue, we always pull them back because the life of the staff is, 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 is most important mm -hmm. to us. We don't want to, anybody to you know, lose their life or even get hurt in the line of duty. So we, we, we actually take that very seriously. Mm. But these are very interesting. Working in the NCC is a labor of love. If you don't like the work, you'll never do it because it's, it's hard. It's appalling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your final words. It's hard. Well, I mean, um, I'm not going to say anything different from what you said already. Mm. I just want to encourage Ghanaians, right, that the democracy did not serve us well for 30 years for nothing, you know that we should go back to the constitution. The people say it's problematic and this and that, but it's not a bad constitution at all. Yesterday I was on a program and they said, oh, but the constitution was written for one person. I'm like, how can you even say that? Sometimes we repeat things we hear without even you know, thinking through it deeply. This is a constitution that is almost radical in terms of the way it, it's, it is unequivocal about human rights, about media rights, a whole chapter dedicated to media whole chapter dedicated to human. We have chapter six, which is about the, uh, uh, the arrangements, the uh, direct, directive principles of state policy. This, this is a rich constitution. Of course, it's not perfect. People have, pro for me, my personal problem with that constitution is the fact that we are still not electing our heads of local government. So for me, that is the big thing. We need to, we need to resolve that. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a blot on our uh, democrac uh, de democratic uh, sort of how far we've come. We've come way too far 
to have a situation where we have heads of local government being appointed. That's, for me, that's a big change that should happen. Others have other problems. They say, oh, too much power in the presidency. We should not get ministers um, from amongst the MPs. But let's solve, let's, let's amend those problems. The constitution is flexible enough that it has inbuilt mechanisms for, for changing it. Do you understand? So I don't buy that um, this is such a terrible constitution. It served us so well. If you look at the 30 years before, before the start of the Fourth Republic, and you, if anybody will be truthful and tell that the turbulence mm -hmm. and the uncertainty and the insecurity, you know, that we lived under. And the fact that today we can have, everybody can find a license and set up a media house. So it didn't used to be like that. You couldn't even talk and write freely. You would disappear. And if you don't take care, people won't find you. <laughs> you won't find you again. We've come a long way. Mm. Of course, it's not perfect, but we have to recognize we've come a long way. We have to recognize that we need to work hard to make the democracy work for us. And that if it's not delivering today, we should ask ourselves, why is it not delivering? And these are the things we, knew we need to do for the dividends to come. And then we work on it. You know, we shouldn't give up. We shouldn't throw our hands in the air. We shouldn't take a radical position. All of that will not help us. Mm. The only thing that will help us is continuing to work together, forge ahead. Mm. So I want to encourage all Ghanaians, you know, that we should just keep that in mind. No matter what happens, the democracy must stand. It's not about this party or that party. The democracy must stand. stand. So please, go and vote. Don't take money from politicians. If you don't take money from them, they will fear. Because they'll be asking us, what else can we do? Maybe at that point they'll start listening. But don't, let's, let's help ourselves by doing some of these small, small things. Mm -hmm. right? And right. to the politicians, mm -hmm. I know that they, they really hustle with this money. You know, they won't say it because if they say it, if you don't take care, people will, will say that if you don't have money, why are you coming here? So, but imagine that um, research findings have, have indicated that from CDD, a credible institution, yeah. that uh, running for MP today, uh, uh, the going rate is that if you're going to run for office as a member of parliament, you will need half a million dollars plus. It's a, where, where are people going to find this money to come around? It excludes almost everybody from the opportunity. And who does it leave to be able to come and run? A lot of that half a million dollars is just money that goes into people's pockets. We, we, have, to, we have to recognize where we've all gone wrong and pull back. It's dangerous. Politicians have to recognize it. Citizens have to recognize it. We need to pull back from that. We need to do these things to build our democracy. Mm. All of us have to do our part. Right. Why are you not an assemblyman, for instance? A nice, upstanding citizen like you, tax paying. Mm. Why are you not an assemblyman? Mm? Are you an assemblyman? <laughs> <laughs> Why do people run for assembly? Because right. everybody thinks that to serve your country, you have to go and do some big MP things and big presidential things. No. Serve your community. Be there. Right? It's, it's a voluntary job, you know? Mm. It doesn't mean that you don't do the work that you're doing. If people of your caliber, two fine gentlemen, people of your caliber were assemblymen, think of how the assemblies will be revolutionized. Overnight, mm. you have people there who are like you. Do you think a lot will go wrong if people in the assembly were like you? No, oh, I want you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, thank you so, so much, uh, Ms. Kathleen Adi, Chairperson of the National Commission for Civic Education. It's been a very insightful, educative discourse here. I mean, that is, that is the primary mandate of the NCCE, to educate. And I'm sure uh, we've all picked a thing or two from today's conversation. My name is Kokwa Lomaso. I sat in for Comrade Pratt. Uh, today, it's not talk time with Chrissy Pratt. Today is talk time with Gokuala or myself. I'll catch you Monday on the newspaper review segment of the show. Do have a pleasant evening. Bye-bye.